I can't have any contact with peanuts, and I'm terrified of them due to some bad experiences of ending up in the hospital. I have my shots now on me all the time. It's not exactly airborne, but I could have irritation, and if it, for example, touched something that had been in contact with peanuts, I could have swollen eyes and achy nose and throat. Ingesting is fatal. My boyfriend's daughter is a teen and has no respect whatsoever for my anxiety. My boyfriend and I moved in and she lives with us every other week. Now, I told my boyfriend I don't want her here because she doesn't respect my boundaries, but I understand that he doesn't want to live with me. In that case, we could revert to him being with me when he doesn't have his daughter. He got very upset because he said he loved me and wanted a real relationship and to live in one home. So I told him that maybe he should be with someone who isn't allergic then. He thinks I'm being very unfair. He said, well, she'll probably hate the next one too, and the next, and the next, because she wants her mom and me to be together again. So it wasn't you specifically that she dislikes. I said that maybe he needed to take a break from dating until she was on board, but he said that he couldn't be single just because his daughter wanted him to. Before me, he was single for six years, which wasn't good enough. Before we decided to move in together, we'd done some trial living together and his daughter never did anything about the nuts. But now, for four months, she's always had peanuts with her. I don't know why she's doing this. I thought we were cool. She just smirks and says, maybe if you're so allergic, maybe you're not meant to survive. Am I the idiot for telling my boyfriend that his daughter is not allowed in my apartment because she doesn't stop smuggling peanuts in? I'm sorry, his daughter smirks and says, maybe you're not meant to survive. And he thinks you're being unfair? Wait, my bad, very unfair. He essentially thinks you need to suck it up and risk death because she'd probably hate the next one too. Honey, kick that mess to the curb while thanking whatever higher power you might believe in that this brat hasn't managed to send you to the hospital. Peanut allergies absolutely are not something to mess with. Emphatically not the idiot. Jeez, you need to leave this relationship ASAP. She's smirking about potential assault and her father doesn't seem to understand the severity of this. She thinks it's funny and he doesn't care. Please stop trying to get him to understand when the fact is he doesn't care. He's trying to get you to bend instead of disciplining his daughter for something very serious. Take control of what you can and end it with some self-respect. The amount of disrespect for your health is amazing. Exactly, he doesn't want to be alone. He doesn't want to talk to his daughter. He will have trouble with the next one and the next one and the next one. Where are his thoughts about OP? He's a terrible father who lets his spoiled teenager do something evil. That girl, she's a junior sociopath. She needs some serious help as well unless he wants to see her charged with attempted murder, which she is doing by bringing peanuts into the house. Run away, he doesn't care about you at all. I feel bad for the next girl too. The teen is not going to stop. Hopefully the next girl that comes around doesn't have an allergy because the boyfriend sure isn't going to help. Hopefully she's in therapy because she's not coping well with her parents' separation, even though it's been six years. Please protect yourself and be safe. My 37 female husband, 43, and I have a son, tween together, and I'm currently pregnant with our second child. My husband and I have already booked the venue for the gender reveal, we'll lose the photographer's deposit and what we spent on decorations, etc. However, my husband is more concerned about the reputation effect as he grew up affluent, has a very high-paying job and a stake in a family business. However, I can tell that despite us already having a boy, who he absolutely adores, they can do no wrong in each other's eyes, my son always had every toy, fun activity, and best clothes gifted by his dad. He desperately wants our second child, who we expect to be our last, to be a boy. I went into planning this reveal, rationalizing that gender disappointment is okay. Still, I've come to realize that there is wishing you're having a son. Then there's fixating on not having a daughter even more than wanting another son. My husband falls into the second category. We didn't do a gender reveal for our firstborn because my husband kept putting off whether or not he wanted to hear it from the doctor and when. We ended up learning, with him ecstatic, about having a son less than a month before giving birth. It's not all his fault. He grew up with an older dad who was always controlling toward his mother. Their town at the time was essentially a company town, and his dad threatened her family's jobs. Plus, he made it impossible for her to go about her day without seeing him until she agreed to be with him. My husband also pursued me pretty aggressively and we had tension over how I, at times, felt uneasy around him. Yes, we've been in therapy over this. Our marriage had been strained because I was done with him not understanding why my body was still not 100% three months after giving birth. Now his demons are back. 
We got to a point where he said fine to me going alone to hear the baby's gender without telling him and I found out we were having a girl. I guess I don't have a good poker face based on his negative reaction after I got home. He's arguing he doesn't know the baby's gender because I did not explicitly tell him, but 100% he does know. I'd be okay with a reveal where the guests are surprised. Still, it's in a week and with each day my husband grows more withdrawn and he's not the type who can fake happiness and often tries to leave and pull me away with him when he's really upset. I decided to pull the plug. Again, he's not mad about the money, yet he's angry that we're doing this to our family and friends and what this may say about him. I put my foot down. Am I the idiot? I'm sorry you thought marrying him was a good idea. You need to work on your self-esteem. Not the idiot for cancelling the party, but this is the least of your problems now. I grew up knowing I was unwanted and it's not a good thing to subject your child to. And she's not even considering leaving him now. Usually I don't think divorcing him is the answer, but your daughter should not be around this man. Honey, have you had to go to therapy because he essentially stalked you until you married him? Why the heck are you with him, let alone having his children? Why are you planning to raise a daughter with this man? It's not his fault because blah 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 reasons. Um, yes, it damn well is. You are the idiot for marrying a controlling misogynist, having a child with him who will grow up to be a controlling misogynist, having another baby with him that he already hates and she isn't even born yet, and then defending his behavior on here. Pull your head out of your butt or enjoy picking up the broken pieces of your daughter for the years of neglect and abuse coming her way. I, 26 male, was in a relationship with my girlfriend, 26, for almost six years. We loved each other, but last year my girlfriend and I decided to separate for a while to rekindle our relationship. We placed no restrictions on the separation and we were free to do whatever we wanted and act as if we were single. We took a break for a couple of months. The break was much needed to recharge our relationship. A week after getting back together, my girlfriend showed signs of pregnancy. She got an at-home pregnancy test done, which confirmed she was pregnant. We were both overjoyed and happy. A few months later, I planned on proposing to her and I'd already bought the engagement ring. But I wanted to confirm first that I was the father before proposing to her and getting the prenatal paternity test done. My girlfriend and I both wanted to do the NIPP test to confirm that I was the father. My girlfriend said she did have intimacy with someone during our break, so there was an off chance I wasn't the father. But we were both very confident that I would be the father. We received the results a few weeks later and I wasn't the father. I was extremely sad and dejected and my girlfriend was very sad too. It just hurt me a lot and emotionally I couldn't process it. A week later, I broke up with my girlfriend. The breakup was extremely traumatizing for my girlfriend and even for me. I told my girlfriend that I just didn't want to be the baby's father and that if possible she had to try and contact the biological father and let him know. I then helped her move back to her parents' home. Am I the idiot? Separating to recharge the relationship is maybe the dumbest idea I've heard. Well, how did that recharge go? She recharged. It appears she got a data transfer of 23 chromosomes too. You're delusional if you think taking a break from a relationship is a good way to fix one. LOL. A break doesn't rekindle anything. It just reaffirms that you're not meant for each other. Taking breaks is the biggest joke somebody can fall for. Crap was over right there. OP just didn't know it yet. I mean, I can understand taking a break in the sense of just let me chill at home, hang out with friends, or focus on projects that I haven't been able to get around to without having to do or worry about our relationship stuff. Because relationships take work, but not I'm a bang other people, oh and afterward, let's get married. Especially when you don't know for damn sure that you're cool with that. Exactly. I need time to screw other people to see if I want to continue our relationship. This crap is ignorant and she started showing symptoms a week after getting back together. Like, guys, I don't think you understand how pregnancy works. Kids are dumber and dumber. They're almost 30 too. I don't know why people these days believe that taking breaks in which you can go and screw everyone you can is a good way to rekindle a relationship. There are dozens of better ways to solve problems in a relationship. I've been married for over 20 years and together many years before that, and we've had our issues but never separated like this. You can go and live la vida loca and I'll do the same. Yes, we've been apart and separated for a while as a resource, but knowing we're still a monogamous couple who just need some space to work things out with ourselves. Being with other people was out of the equation. Play stupid games, wing kids from another man. To rekindle our relationship, 
we decided to break up. Where do all these morons come from? So, just a quick update. I called my ex last night and asked her if she'd found the bio dad, but she said no. She said she just knew his first name but didn't have his number or any social media. She'd met him at the bar. It was pretty much a one-night stand. I asked her how her parents were taking it and unfortunately they aren't taking it too well and are really critical of her. Her parents really liked me and had no idea we even took a break. My ex was a bit of an emotional mess when I called her last night and I really felt bad. I really wished that baby was mine. My ex and I really envisioned spending the rest of our lives together, but sadly it isn't. Last night I told my ex that that was the last time I was going to call her and wished her well in her future. She was crying badly at the end which broke my heart when I hung up. My parents have never liked my oldest son, Nathaniel. He was my godson and the child of my best friend and her wife. My friend Sarah had been out and proud since she was 12. Her parents were super supportive and were the best allies I could imagine, even before she told them. Sarah and I went to middle school and became friends. I had a massive crush on her until she explained that she was into girls. At first, I was confused, then I accepted it, and our friendship changed and got stronger. My parents hated her, not for breaking my heart or anything, just because she was gay. I told them I wouldn't stop being friends with her and that I would rather be friends with her than their kid if they tried to make me choose. Fortunately for my parents, Sarah and her family moved, but we stayed in contact with email and MySpace. Out of sight, out of mind for my parents. Sarah and I both applied and were accepted to the same college. Two years later, we moved out of the dorms and got an apartment together. She was the best wing person ever. She met and married her wife. They needed a donor. I fit their criteria. I agreed so long as we had a contract that took any financial responsibility away from me. They agreed and I became Uncle Caden. I was in their son's life from the moment he was born. I also became his father figure and godfather. We were going to tell him when he was old enough to understand. Then I met my wife and got married. She knew the whole story because I didn't want her to think I would keep such essential details of my life a secret. We have two children together. I'm in low contact with my parents for multiple reasons. Their homophobia is low on the list, if that gives you any idea how my parents are. They attended our wedding and have spent time with both of our kids. We didn't deny them the opportunity to be grandparents. We don't go out of our way to include them. Sarah and her wife passed away in a boating accident. Nate was with Sarah's parents at the time. I became his guardian and adopted him ASAP. He was a tween. I make sure he sees his relatives on both of his mother's sides. I will continue until he's old enough to go alone. It's made for a confusing and bittersweet family. None of them knew I was not just his dad, but also his father. My parents, on the other hand, have always tried to exclude him. I've made it clear to them that he's my son and I won't put up with their crap. I also didn't tell them the truth because I feared they would tell him before we were ready. We told Nate about it when he was a mid-teen. He laughed and said he'd figured it out a long time ago, but was humoring me and his moms by pretending he didn't. He's always been a smarty. He also said he was more than happy with his two sets of grandparents and didn't feel he was missing much with my folks. My wife's parents love him too. It came to a head in February. My parents received an inheritance from my grandmother passing away. They don't need the money, so they contacted me to see if they could put money into the kids' education funds. I thanked them and agreed. I told them they could send me the money and I would split it into all three accounts. Nathaniel has a good fund that we topped off since we got money from his mom's insurance. We also rented out their old house and used that money for expenses. My wife and I both work and have pretty decent accounts for our kids, but extra money won't hurt. My parents said that they only wanted me to split it two ways. Just my kids and my wife would be getting money. I then said thanks, but no thanks. I would not exclude one of my kids because they were terrible people. They ended up opening accounts for my kids by themselves. Nothing I can do about that. My grandparents also set up a trust fund for their descendants to draw from when they turned 18. It isn't a lot of money, but every little bit helps these days. Nate is graduating next year, so we submitted the paperwork to get him that money. My uncle is one of the trustees and he told my parents, and they freaked out that I never told them that Nate was my kid. I told them they were idiots because they knew I adopted him and that fact alone made him my kid. Huge argument. You know what we mean, how could you keep him from us? Blah, blah, blah. I said that for five years they've always behaved badly towards him, even though he was my son. Why would I include them more in his life? They're saying that they will sue for grandparents' rights. I laughed in their faces. I have a letter from them saying they do not consider him their grandchild.
As I said, we're in low contact with them, but my sisters both think I'm being overly cruel even though they also see our parents very little. I think my son didn't miss much by not interacting with people that absolutely would have said crappy things about his original parents. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Ha ha, sounds like the grandparents didn't realize they messed up big time and now want an apology because they would never have treated him like the ship on the bottom of their shoes had they known he was blood related. Now they get to think about their terrible behavior toward an innocent child until they croak and they can't handle it. Let them stay miserable. It's good karma for them. Grandparents' rights over a teenager? Who doesn't like them? Huh, I would love to sit in on that court hearing. It's bad enough when otherwise decent enough people are hung up on genetics and names and bloodlines. But when crappy people are, it's just so disgusting. OP, I'm glad your wife is amazing, your son is grounded and cool, and your parents are now enjoying their bitter feast of crow.